In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. <coughs> I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and inequities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as, a, as an, called an ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We join together in the responsive reading of Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. To him who alone does great wonders. For his love and his to him who by understanding made the heavens. For his love and his to him who spread out the earth above the waters. For his love and his to him who made the great lights. For his love and his the sun to rule over the day. The moon and stars to rule over the night. Glory be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Amen. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, so that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament lesson for this evening is written in the 55th chapter of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at the first verse. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no m money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the responsive reading of the gradual. Or the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. For from him and through him and to him are all things. The epistle lesson is written in the ninth chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans, beginning at the first verse. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is a Christ who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please rise at this time? The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard about the death of John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied, and they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
we now join in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now have our children's message. You may be seated. the fairgrounds to enjoy some delicious fair food and it got me thinking what if I open my own food stand wonder if I could do it with things that are already in my kitchen let me take a quick look I start my own food stand with two fish sticks and five hot dog buns? That's uh, not a lot of food and they don't really go together. And I definitely couldn't feed a lot of people. Well, in our gospel lesson today, Jesus takes five loaves of bread and two fish and feeds a crowd of 5,000 people. Actually, it was probably even more than that. That would be like me taking my two fish sticks and five hot dog buns and feeding the entire town of Laverne. It just doesn't seem possible. But with God, all things are possible. Jesus blessed the food at their gathering and everyone ate until they were full. They even gathered up baskets of leftovers. I can't turn fish sticks and hot dog buns into a meal, but Jesus can turn bread and fish into a meal for thousands. And it's a reminder to us that Jesus gives us everything we need, even when it doesn't seem possible to us. He is always going to be there to take care of us and give us this day our daily bread. Will you join me in prayer? You can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for taking care of us and giving us everything we need every single day. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Uh, don't be on the lookout for Jessica's food stand anytime soon. We continue with the singing of our next hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text which we shall consider this evening is the Old Testament lesson which you heard read just a few moments ago. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there's a story about a, a couple of prowlers that broke into a the department store in this one city. But these prowlers didn't come into that store to, to steal anything. They came into that store to mix up the price tags of all the items in that store. They took a, the price tag of about a $500 camera and put it on a, on a $5 notepad. They took a a $6 price tag from a paperback book and put it on about a $600 outboard motor. They exchanged the price tags of pretty much every item in the store. But the crazy part of this story is what happened the next day in that store. The next day, the store opened up as normal. Salespeople in that store did their job of selling items from that store. Customers came into that store and, and bought items in that store. The store ran pretty much as usual that day for four hours before anybody finally realized that something was, was all mixed up and the, the items with their price tags should, were not what they should have been. And so some people in that, those first four hours got quite the deal. They made really good bargains, while other people paid much, much more for, that, for their item than they should have. This was the craziest day sale that there ever was. This is the time of year when many stores in small towns like Laverne have their crazy day sale. Has Laverne had their crazy day sales yet? They do? Haven't? Okay. Well, a person can save a little money. A, a person can get a few bargains when he shops at, at these stores in these small towns on crazy day. In our text for this evening, the prophet Isaiah talks about God's crazy day sale. With God's crazy day sale, you don't need any money. You don't need to buy anything. You don't have to work or, or labor to, to bargain for God's everlasting covenant, to buy his, his faithful love. May the Holy Spirit then guide and direct us this evening as we consider the message of our text, the message God's crazy day sale. I'd like to begin my message tonight talking about how many people are absolutely crazy and what they seek to, to satisfy their hunger or their thirst in this life. Our text for this evening asks the questions, why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? So many people seek to satisfy their hunger and thirst for, for happiness or, or contentment through the things of, of this world. They think if they can finally live in that dream house or be able to, to buy that dream house, then they'll be happy or content for the rest of their lives. Or there are farmers probably in, in this area who, who think if they could just buy that one more quarter of land or buy that one more piece of, of new machinery, then they would be happy or content. But these people discover that as soon as they move into that dream house or buy that new piece of machinery, their happiness or contentment doesn't last for very long. Or these people look to satisfy their happiness or their contentment and what they leave for their children. I hear people say all the time, I just want to 
to be able to give my children what, what I never had. When I hear people say this, uh, it almost makes me think that these people live their entire adult life on, on poverty in the poorhouse, and that God didn't bless them hardly at all. But shouldn't we be happy and content and just leaving to our children what we're able to leave to them? Shouldn't we be happy and content if, if our children have just about the same as, as what we have. The writer of the book of Ecclesiastes says about those who seek to satisfy their hunger and thirst for contentment in the things of this world. The writer of the book of Ecclesiastes says, whoever loves money never has enough money. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This, too, is vanity. Some people also try to, to, to satisfy their hunger or thirst for contentment and having, a, having their name well known. When a new president is elected into office, that president has to, to fill, fill about 6,000 positions in his administration. Can you imagine how many people who might have political aspirations or political ambitions seek to, to be chosen for one of those offices? Or in the same kind of manner, did you know that you can petition the United States Board of Geographical Names to have your name put on some stock dam or some lake or hill somewhere in Minnesota. With that board's approval, you can have your name on a government-issued map. All you have to do is, is provide this board with a description of this geographical feature. Write down its location as far as longitude and latitude. Write down uh, the reasons why your name should be put on that that lake or stock dam, and then verify for that board that, that nobody else's name has been put on that, that lake or, or hill. The, this whole process just takes a, a matter of a few months, and, and this board approves about 90% of the people who, who write into this board. The only problem, however, though, is, is that you really have to, to get your survivors to, to fill out this petition and send it to this board. Because this board will not put the name of someone who's still living on this lake or stock dam. Kind of makes you scratch your head, doesn't it? To think, why would people go through this whole process or make sure that their survivors do this for them. Just so that their name could be put on that lake or hill when they're not even going to be alive to see it. So many people in the same way are crazy enough to think that, they're, that they can earn their own way into heaven. These people try to be the best neighbors they can be. They try as hard as they can to, to keep God's Ten Commandments as, as well as they can so that they can earn eternal life for themselves. And after these people have been so good for so much of their life, they kind of look down on, on other people like 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 the New Testament Pharisees, who they figure have not been nearly as good as they have. These people don't want to give God any credit, any glory at all, for the fact that they now have received eternal life in heaven. These people are kind of like this one church member who was working in his garden outside when his pastor came by for a visit. The pastor looked at this man's garden and he said to him, Well, Brother William, 
That's a fine garden you have there. Those are nice potatoes and tomatoes and, and peas you have growing in your garden. God certainly has, has blessed you with a, a bountiful garden this year, hasn't he? Well, this fellow was kind of taken back that, that his pastor gave God so much of the credit for his beautiful garden when, when he worked so hard hoeing and, and tilling in this garden to, to make the, the rows as clean and as straight as he possibly could. And so he said to his pastor, well, pastor, yeah, God has blessed me with a pretty nice garden, but you should have seen this worthless piece of ground last year when God had it all by himself. This church member wanted to give himself the majority of the credit for, the, for this nice garden he had. Just like people today are, are so tempted to, to give the majority of the credit to themselves when they receive eternal life in heaven. Isn't it kind of ironic and strange that we're always looking for something free in this world. We're always looking for that bargain in this world. We buy all kinds of lottery tickets. We hope that we win that drawing or that sweepstake so we can get something for nothing in this world. But when it comes to the world to come, we figure that we've got to earn that as much as we can possibly for ourselves. But now let's look at God's crazy day sale that Isaiah talks about in our text for this evening. And here I want to get a little more personal. I brought with me tonight uh, about a half a plastic bottle of water. Now, I don't know how much this cost. It probably was between a dollar and two dollars. Fifty or sixty years ago, can you imagine paying anything at all for a drink of water? We figure that we can get a free drink of water from a water fountain anytime we want. But now look at that baptismal font. If I would take the lid off that baptismal font and, and fill the bowl from that baptismal bowl with water, so that we could baptize someone in this church. That water wouldn't cost the parents anything, it wouldn't cost the church anything, it wouldn't cost me anything. But you add God's word to that water. And those parents and that child have the best bargain you can imagine and that you have now brought that child into the family of God. I also brought with me tonight just a few slices from a loaf of bread that I have left over. If I paid for this entire loaf of bread, it would probably be about $5. I also brought with me, it's not a bottle of wine, it's a bottle of Irish whiskey. But it's an empty bottle, remember that, all right? And it cost about $20. But next Sunday, you'll be offered a much smaller, thinner bite of bread and just a little cup of wine. And what a bargain you'll get from that meal. From that meal, you'll receive your Savior's own body and blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. I also brought with me tonight a uh, 35 anniversary book of, from, uh, concerning the Minnesota Vikings, Purple Hearts and Gold Memories. I think this book, I, when somebody bought it for me, I'm guessing it was about $40. But this book won't get me into a Vikings game this year. Won't get me a, a free seat at that Vikings game. It won't give me a, an autograph from any Vikings player. Also up with me, of course, appears is another book, the Holy Bible. I don't know how much this Bible would cost, maybe between $20 and $30. 
But this Bible will give me a, a free seat in the kingdom of heaven. Because this Bible, God's word, tells me about God's son who lived and died for all of us. Died on the cross for our sins and then rose from his grave on Easter morning to assure all of us that we will one day rise from our graves. God's crazy day sale that Isaiah talks about in our text gives each one of us an everlasting covenant. It provides for us God's faithful love. Every piece of merchandise that we buy in this world gets old. It fades, it, it wastes away, it loses its value. But the covenant that God has made with us in his word, that covenant never gets old. It never loses its value. Now, a covenant is, is an agreement, kind of a, like a, a treaty. And most of the covenants that were made in biblical times were covenants that were made between two equal parties. And in most of these covenants, there was some give and some take on the part of both, both parties. But the covenant God makes with us is completely one-sided. The covenant that that God makes with us, it's, it's all, all God who's doing the giving. We heard about God's giving in one of our lessons last weekend. And we heard about God's giving in one of our lessons for tonight. In one of our lessons last Sunday, we hear about how much God gave to us. Again, in, in our epistle lesson last weekend, again from Paul's letter to the Romans, those well-known words from Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In our, in our gospel lesson for tonight, we saw how abundantly our Savior gave to this crowd of 5,000 people who gathered around him. Jesus fed all those people with just five loaves of bread and a couple of fish. He fed all those people so that they were filled up and then they, had, then they had more left over than they had when they started. They have 12 baskets of leftovers. In John's gospel, in his parallel account of, of this particular miracle, Jesus talks about what God, about what he provides us today, isn't just physical bread. Jesus said to, to this crowd of people in John's gospel, I tell you the truth, you are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. God's crazy day sale, as Isaiah says, lies with this son of David, whom God made a witness to the nations. This son of David, who, whom God made a leader and a, a commander of the people. God's crazy day sale lies with his own son, who summons all nations to himself. God's crazy day sale lies with this holy one of, of Israel, who to whom all the nations hasten, hasten to come. How many of you ever saw the movie John Q or remember that movie, John Q? Any of you remember that movie? It starred uh, Denzel Washington. In this movie, Denzel Washington pr played a, a, a young father and his very young boy had to have a heart transplant. But John Q, or Denzel Washington's character, his health insurance 
would not pay for that surgery. Denzel Washington or John Q's church took up a special offering for him. And John Q sold everything he had. And he still didn't have enough money to pay for that surgery. Finally, this John Q takes a gun with him into the hospital. He takes this, this heart surgeon and a number of other people in that hospital, he takes them hostage so that this heart surgeon will perform this, this heart transplant on his young son. But this doctor won't do it. They don't even have a heart in the first place. Towards the end of the movie, when his son doesn't seem like he has much time left to live, and there is no heart available, this John Q is ready to, to shoot himself so he can give his own heart to his son for a heart transplant. This John Q was is ready to, to give up his own heart to save his son because he loves his son that much. Our Heavenly Father was ready to give up one person who meant the most in his heart, his one and only son, to save each one of us because he loved us that much. God's crazy day sale for us may not cost us anything, but it cost our God everything. To God's crazy day sale, as the prophet Isaiah says, we've been endowed with splendor. How many of you have heard of this past in Christian author Max Licato? You hear of him? Okay. Max Licato once told a story about that he was taking a friend out for lunch, and he was going to pay for both of their meal. He got the bill for that meal, and he reached in his back pocket to pull out his billfold so they could pay for that meal. When he reached back there, guess what? Couldn't find his billfold. He then remembered that he left his billfold at home. He had no money, no credit cards, no nothing to pay for that meal. With one hand, he held the bill for his friend and his own meal. But with his other hand, he had nothing. The friend saw the predicament that Max Licato said had and said to him, give this bill to me. I'll pay it. That's what our Heavenly Father has said to each of us. He says, give me the bill for your sin. I'll pay it. That's what God's crazy day sale is all about. Amen. We continue with the singing of the next hymn.
Lord, you have bidden us to come without money, to receive grace beyond price. Hear us as we heed your call and turn to you in prayer, confident of your promise to hear and answer us. Father, we have sought meaning, comfort, and sustenance from all the wrong places. Grant us your Holy Spirit so that our hearts may be turned to your word, that we may hunger for your Son's body and blood, and that we may discern truth from error. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we give you thanks that you have blessed us beyond what we deserve and given to us your church. Guard her light by your spirit and strengthen her witness before the nations. Bless all pastors and church workers in their, in their service to us in your name. And bless those now preparing for church work vocations. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we too quickly focus on what we lack and not upon your unlimited grace. Bless all relief agencies and, and services of your church on behalf of the hungry, the homeless, the hurting, and those who have lost hope. Bless those visited by disaster and tragedy and open our hearts to help them recover from their loss. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we are daily blessed to know abundance and freedom. Bless those who defend us from our enemies, who serve us in government, and who protect us in our communities. Be with our president, the Congress, our governor, and our, and our judges and magistrates, that they may discern the right path and lead us with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we suffer with all manner of ills and afflictions. Hear us and grant to us healing according to your will, strength in time of trial and peace at the last. We pray especially for Tom Dolman, David Huskies, Joyce Fick, Ramona Walker, Diane Kallstead, and those named in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Father, your, mer your blessings and mercies are new each day. Grant that we as your family would receive these blessings with thanksgiving and joy, and that we would generously share those blessings with those still in need. We are grateful for the blessing of life that we celebrate with Earl and Janet Hansen on their special wedding anniversary, and with Kathleen Kelm on her special birthday. We are also grateful for the, for the opportunity to lift up Christy DeBauer, Loretta Gerke, Greg and Sandy Johnson, Bryce Niesink, and Janice Fick, Esther Spies Frakis, and Brad and Laura Yekima, Samantha and Wesley, as part of our family here at St. John's. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we are daily and richly surrounded with your love and care. Grant us grateful hearts that what we have received we may share with those in need and generously support the work of your church. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we ask you to grant us all things needful and to keep from us all things harmful to us and to our salvation, for we trust your wisdom and your love. Teach us to pray without fear. Your will be done through Jesus Christ our Lord. We join together in the prayer our Savior's taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We continue with the singing of our last hymn. 